wonderful Wednesday to each of you. God bless, God bless, God bless. Um, yesterday was a very um, strenuous day uh, emotionally and uh, physically, but more emotionally yesterday having to deal with this and shift, change caps, change hats and, and handle business, change hats and do this and change hats and get ready for Bible study. It was a very uh, busy day for me. And I feel so much better today. Um, anytime I clean house, I feel really good behind my looking at a clean house. So that just perks me up when I can, especially when I can get in there and do it like I want to do it. Bathrooms clean. Um, baby girl did the one, the um, bathroom uh, on the hallway. And I took care of some other cleaning, and I feel really great about that. Hey, Jetty. Oh, thank you, sugar. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm feeling a lot. I'm feeling a bit more rested today. Um, just yesterday was just busy and a little bit strenuous trying to handle business, the Medicare stuff, and I have to remember mine, his, um, tie up loose ends with that, make contacts here. Uh, deal with some church things and so but today I'm feeling better especially when I clean when I clean it does something for me to have a clean house a clean bedroom a clean bathroom and so I'm just uh, feeling a pretty good pretty good pretty good uh, I just want to come on um, uh, this morning and share I had posted something and the Holy Spirit took me another way on yesterday uh, but I wanted to talk about, because I think about it sometimes, um, and the Lord brought it to my attention. Hey, Pastor, how are you? <laughs> bless you, bless you. Um, I just kind of wanted to hit this, and then I'll leave it alone. Hi, Kiki. Um, Kiki is one of our spiritual babes at the church. She's one of our spiritual babes, and her spiritual mom's got to pull her to the side and talk to her about some things. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love my Kiki. But I wanted to kind of pose a, a challenge to the believers. Um, and so many of us think we are mature believers, but we really, we're not mature. And there's some signs of mature believers. Hebrews deals with it all the way through it. Good to see you, son. Good to see you. Uh, you might be able to help me with this this is morning. Um, the Lord challenged me, and I made it as a post, but he says now this morning was a time to deal with it. Um, when you approach people, when you interact with people, uh, when you are discussing people, uh, do you come out of a particular bag or the Bible? Bag or Bible? Bag or Bible? When you come out of a bag, the bag is really a bag of preconceived ideas, um, emotionalism, uh, uh, things you're holding against people, things you've heard about people. They're in this bag. And, and when you have to interact uh, with people, you have to be careful because if you've not forgiven, what you will end up doing is approaching people out of prejudices that they might not deserve. They don't deserve it from anybody because we can't point the finger too much at people. We have to um, love them. And if we can help them, help them. If we can speak to them, uh, for them, do that. But um, coming against them out of a bag really does not help people. Believe this or not, there are a lot of people in the body Pastor Rogers, I know this to be true, that are doing some things, number one, because that are not godly, number one, because they see other believers who are professing to be saved doing it. Come on, come on. And secondly, they're doing it because we have not taught them any better, and they don't see anybody else who's abiding by something different, a different biblical rule, a biblical standard. And with the third, then, then we're also looking at the fact that we just haven't taught them. They just, they don't see it. They don't understand it that way. When you pull a man off the street, 
When you pull him off the street and you, you, he gives his life to Christ, he doesn't know from Jack what it looks like to be a man of God. Come on, y'all. We, we may as well get up under this guilt tent here, this uh, conviction tent. Let me say conviction. Get on up under this, this, this tent because it is our job to do that. And so when they come in, they don't know. This man does not know what it looks like to be a man of God. He doesn't know what it looks like to be the head of his household. And you're expecting of him what he has not been taught and he has not seen it. And you've not told him what is required. And even if you tell him, he doesn't still, he still doesn't know what that looks like. You take uh, talk to him and he may know that I'm down in the dumps, I'm homeless uh, and I've been drinking and the drinking uh, has gotten me, but he doesn't understand um, to stop drinking because it's just not good for your health. He doesn't understand that in a spiritual sense that it, it det is a deterrent against his walk with God. It's a deterrent against his, his testimony. And, and he doesn't understand that like that. And we're so busy doing church work until we don't have time to pull these people aside. Yes, sir. Yes, pastor. Yes, you're absolutely. Because nobody's exhibiting it. Nobody's pulling them to the side and saying, um, my girlfriend, I, we can talk like this behind closed doors. Some women don't, they don't know what it means like to live without being with a man. They, they know you're telling them that, that it's wrong, but they've done it. It's been their lifestyle. But have you really taken time out with her? And then maybe another single who's lived it and knows the ins and outs and the, the perils and the, the conflicts and the challenges that that single woman has to go through. So you tell her to don't do this and don't do that. And then when she gets to the point that she needs her rent paid and nobody has explained to her the real way to trust God or how, and, and I, here's another thing. I make sure we try to do at West Haven. When people get saved and they come in, they don't have the first thing. And I got a baby, a couple of babies on here. They will tell you the first thing I try to do. And most of the time it has worked is a uh, network with somebody there at the church, a network with somebody to help them get a job. One ge gentleman came and he didn't have a job. And we, he gave his life to Christ and he was used to living with this woman who was not a godly woman. And uh, he, didn't have, he didn't have anything. So what we try to do, we try to make sure that he was connected. And when he left there Sunday, somebody did a text right, uh, right in the church service. And I, the Lord said, ask him. I said, baby, uh, can you network and get this baby a job? He got right on his cell phone in the church and the baby was working Monday. The very next day, those practical things, when people live a lifestyle of holiness, there's a practical side of living holy. There's a practical side. Everything is not speaking in tongues. Y'all got to help me today. Y'all got to help. Everything doesn't involve speaking in tongues. Come on, come on. Um, everything does not involve what we think it is involved. Yes, you need to get in your Bible. Yes, you need to study your word. Come on here. Yes, you need to do those godly things. But God says we set priorities. So they have to understand that the Bible also says if you don't live, you don't eat. So when several who come in, they didn't have, they needed food. We had a little food pantry. My rule there is, the rules we've set is, if you come and you're a member of the church, don't go to the food pantry and you don't need the food. But when people come in, they need emergency food. We have a pantry set up. And one um, of my friends, Dr. Carolyn Bibbs, saw me doing that. Say so when you do right, God will, why will multiply. He will, he will, in, in, he will invest himself in what you're doing because you're, you're investing him in what you're doing. And so what happened was she uh, strutted in our church one Sunday, wrote me out a check for, I think it was a thousand or two thousand dollars. And also after that donated, uh, a, a, almost like a brand new freezer so that if I needed to, to store meat for, and I, we don't store meat long, but if we needed to store meat because somebody's in trouble, guess what the members do? Mother, I'll give a chicken. Mother, I'll give a steak. Mother, I, and we put it in the freezer because somebody said, I'm hungry. But we're not teaching the practical side of living holy. You, God will provide, but he will use us 
uh, until people can get on their feet. Uh, and so we, I, the bag we're coming out of, we need to check our attitudes because our attitudes uh, determine our altitude, how far we're going, how far we're growing. And some of us are still stuck. We're still stuck in one spot. Well, we just stuck right there. And you got this finger. This is what uh, a lot of, uh, especially folks my age and, 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 and between 50 and 60, we're doing this to the people right here. Da, 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 da. Give people the gospel. Wherever your hands can help. There's too many programs in our churches and in our true Jesus. And the programs are sucking the life and sucking the money out of real ministry. Even if you were to get um, a grant uh, for some things in your ministry, they want to know what you are doing. They're not concerned about your praise and your worship. If they're going to release money, they want to know what are you doing in the community? What are you doing to help people? And so now you have to be cautious, you have to be prayerful, you have to be very discerning because once we started doing that, uh, people had to really start coming in from the neighborhood, getting saved and what happened. But what will happen, you get a shyster in there, a scammer, and we got one. We, we picked out, the Holy Spirit picked out, we didn't mistreat her, but we said, this is what not going to happen. And, and then the sneaky part was to go get somebody else to say they're from that community and tell them to come and, and get from us. And I really believe what they were getting from us, they were taking it back to her. But it's okay because God uh, calls us to discern it, and we lock the door on that. You can come, you can worship, but we locking the door on you for scamming. You're not scamming us in the church God, house of God. God didn't tell us to, tell, to uh, um, deal with scammers. And so, but we, we, what bag are we coming out of? Uh, when we, when you preach the gospel, we have to be careful in that area. If you got some people doing some stuff, sometimes you have to be careful because if it's, if you haven't released it, release them and you haven't released the issue, you will come out of a bag. You will take the pulpit and come out of a bag. Watch it. We've, some of us have done it now. Don't lie. We've done it, but it is not, it is not, um, uh, biblical, biblically ethical uh, to do that. It is not godly. It is not a sign of compassion and, and it's definitely not a sign of maturity that you have grown in the Lord. And so, um, don't just dealt with me the other day. When we do things, what bag are you coming out of? When you come help me, what bag are you coming out of? Uh, what makes you do what you do? Uh, what mo What is motivating you? And when you say what you say, all of this has to be biblically based. It has to be founded in the word of God. And so we must teach people. Uh, we had one gentleman. He came. He, he's been in and out of, of um, I don't know if it's rehab, but I know he uh, has a, a jail record. Um, and um, he, needed, he needed food right then. And you know what I did? I had some people over it. And they said, Mother, he needs thus and so. And I said, okay, let me know. Bishop Wesson and I will handle the meat part. And I tried to offer him some things that was way beyond uh, what he was asking for. He said, no, all he needs is. And so that, that person right there was really in need and was sincere. We took care of it. And from that point on, he has not had to ask us for anything, but he's faithful to the, to the ministry. He's right there on the front to get the word of God. And so, but what bag, man, what bag are we coming out of? And some of us are so obvious in our attitudes until it's just, it just stinky. Uh, sin stinks in the nostrils of God. And, and we can come across so, and, and you know, people get demanding. If you, they come to you and they ask you, they want you to do something now. How, da, 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 uh, 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 what bag is that? You, you smear you smear dirt over what was clean. Uh, come on now, you, you, you had a, a, a good intention, but don't smear dirt and mud over it uh, because you have an attitude. But what bag? Make sure you're coming out of the word of God. Make, make sure you're coming out of the Bible. And this is why God gave me the question, you know, what are you coming out of, uh, of a bag or are you coming out of the Bible, the word of God? It sanctions everything. It justifies 
our actions and our moves and what we say. And I, I think a lot of times we really talk too much. We tell, I, that's, the Lord was dealing with me about that this morning. I was, I you know he tells me a lot of stuff in the shower and I was getting my shower and he said, something came to my mind and um, I can't remember what it was. And he said, too much information. Sometimes you can get a point across and not give so much information. Sometimes when you give too much information in the body of Christ, they would take the information that you gave them and you can use it against you when they don't like you anymore. Oh my God. I've had it to happen. People get close to you. They know your children. Uh, they know your ins and outs. They know your weaknesses. Um, Ooh, I hear God. I hear God. So, um, mm, thank you, Father. Interact with people, but somebody typed this in. Interact with people, but protect your self space. And the Bible says, you know, guard your heart. That's what it means. Uh, interact with people with love, but um, protect your self space, protect your business, protect your heart. Because people will stomp on your heart right in the church. They like you as long as you're doing what they want you to do and saying what you want. they want you to say, um, stroking them like they want to be stroked. But the minute you disagree or you don't do something like that, they, 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 they're not going to keep it to themselves. They're going to go and get several others, at least one more, to make them feel good and to make them feel right and to make them feel like they are in the driver's seat. Mmm. <laughs> Praise God. These are just some little things um, that will help us to mend relationships or to avoid, be proactive. And we can avoid getting into as much as possible. The Bible says, as much as lies within you, live peaceably with all men. As much as you can do it now. You get some people, you just can't, you just can't. You have no control. Just make you sure on your end, everything is working uh, like it should in your heart, your intentions. And then at times, God will give you a vacay. He'll give you a vacay from those spirits that lurk with that person. In other words, he'll cause something to happen to where you have to, don't have to be in their presence very much. He will do things to say, okay, enough is enough. Um, I'm going to remove this person or they will remove themselves. And it's, it's the hand of God. It's the hand of God. And so I just, um, I wanted to come on. I had just finished cleaning and, and was proud of myself and looked in my bathroom. I said, that's how a bathroom needs to look. And it just does something for me. And I said, now might be the time for me strip my beds and all. And now may be the time for me to share um, this with the people of God. And so, uh, the word of God is our base. The word of God is what we measure things by. Uh, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Um, and so I just thank God for, oh, the times that I've gone through battles with people, especially church people. I'm not a one to go out to, never been out to clubs and stuff like that. Uh, so the conflicts and the fights I've had uh, were when I was working in the school system, uh, but nothing like the pain of being done wrong or uh, misunderstood, you know, in the body of Christ. But you learn from that. You don't go back and, and rehash it. You learn from it and you keep moving and take those things and those skills that you learn from from, from the Lord and, and his word and you um, use them as you move forward so that you will not have to fall into that trap again. And so <clears throat> I want you to be encouraged and just consider before you do say, interact, uh, just consider what bag, are you coming out of a bag? Um, are you doing this just because uh, she asked you to. So if that's the case, a person asks you to do it. If that's the case, can you give it your best? Can you give it your best? Since you're not choosing to do it, if they ask you to do it, 
can you come out of the right bag and doing it? Uh, of, or can you come out of the word of God and have your heart right as you, good morning, Sylvia, as you uh, approach the task. And so um, there are times that um, we make choices or people will ask us to do things and maybe we weren't maybe that, mm, what I want to say, we we had made we had, we had no intentions of doing it and wouldn't have chosen to do it but because you love that person and whatever uh you 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 agree to do it we we free freedom of choice but if you're going to do it and you can't do it with the right attitude or with the with all your heart then don't do it leave it alone and so whatever whatever you're going to do, do it because of the word of God. Let it be based upon God's word. And so I just when I when he posed that to me, I'm going like, he says, What what bag are you coming out of? Are you coming out of a bag or the Bible? And I said, Oh God, that's a that's a tremendous challenge. Uh, it's really challenging us to search our hearts um, to make sure we're not falling into. There are, mm, thank you, Father. There, God is just saying there is such a thing as um, mm, church roots. Mm, do I need to explain that? Church roots. I'm going to define it because it's just coming from Holy Spirit. It simply means you've fallen into a slump. You're sort of stagnant. Uh, you're doing and moving, but it's like the, um, yeah, but uh, it's like um, a, a gerb. I used to love hamsters. And uh, when I was in a classroom and I, I just start building, my husband and I, he, he kind of got involved. I started building this huge uh, house. I would add and attach and I would spend a little money and go and I love the hamsters. We've got too many people in a rut. They're building this hamster cage, and that's what it is, a cage, and you've fallen into a rut. And that simply means you're moving, you're doing, but when the hamster gets on that wheel, they got little tunnels they go through, you're getting nowhere. When you get through, you're still inside the cage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, pastor. Yes, sir. And um, we need to ask God, to teach us, I'm trying to teach my daughter that in the practical sense, we need to learn uh, priorities. We need to learn what we need, what we need to be doing first. Now, here's here's what we don't understand. You remember Mary and Martha and the priorities, and Mary knew her priorities, and Martha was just a church worker. She loved Jesus, but she's a church worker. And so she just was uh, fussing over stuff that Jesus didn't care about. Mary uh, dealt with and pondered in her heart what was important. And here's the thing about it. When I did a seminar years ago, I think it was at, um, um, what's the name of the church? Um, mm -mm -mm, Bishop Taylor's church. I did a seminar years ago that uh, Mother Pearly Jenkins had uh, asked me to come and minister, uh, teach. And uh, I talked about that. But here's what God showed, gave me when I prepared that uh, teaching he says, now, I'll give an example, me personally. My first priority, of course, is to God. My second priority as a wife is to my, my husband. And then it, we've got all of these things in a general sense. But watch this now. Like today, I was going to get up, um, clean a little bit, um, shower, clean a little bit, and then go out and, and um, do a little grocery shopping. And I looked at the weather, and I, my knee was hurting me a little bit, and just things started um, happening. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He says, you don't have to do that today. So because I left, was going to leave the house, didn't mean that my husband wasn't first. It meant that today, that was my first priority, was the groceries until the Lord spoke to me. We got to learn how it shifts. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We got to learn how to, sh 
uh, uh, manage the shifting in prioritizing. Um, your wife is, is number one, but you can't stay under her all day. You got to go work. So that's a part of your um, ministering to her and taking care of her. But you, in the run of a day, you might not be able to meet her at a such a such a spot because you got to go this this over here, getting the tags on the car, getting the tags on the the truck means much more to you right then because if you don't, you can't go anywhere without uh, the budget because you're gonna get a ticket. We have to learn how to make the shift shifting in priority as a sub activity a sub and i'm sorry a sub uh how i want to put it uh priority sub priority and and people don't sometimes know when you're preaching in general or teaching in general you got some people whose minds are just that simplistic we have to make it simple and they don't know how to uh if they're married they get saved the husband didn't get saved and and you tell them that the church is important you can't go in that home if he hauls off and slaps her. You got to teach them wisdom. You have to have wisdom with your prioritizing. Thank you, Father. There has to be wisdom when you prioritize. And so you teach her um, the value of her relationship with the husband, how to uh, maintain the relationship until the Lord saves him, or even if he never gets saved, how to... Um, remain uh, attractive to him, how to give him that, that attention that he needs. And, and to, uh, and, and I'm not saying that you stay out of church when they've given you that kind of ignorant stuff, but you may say to, he may say to you, uh, you, or you see him, you know him, you know, he's tired and you got to go to Bible study. Well, Bible study might not happen for you that night. You may during Bible study time, find yourself running his bath water. Come on, come on. Because you're ministering to him. You're still, that's priority. So that night, that particular Bible study night, husband is first in your actions. Husband is first. And so we got to realize the bag that we're coming out of. Because if you don't, you'll be doing things and, and, and uh, digging holes for yourself. Uh, digging a grave for yourself. But I am I am so um, uh, disappointed uh, with church in general, uh, with the leadership, because it's almost like um, I heard my bishop say the night he appointed me, and I had no earthly idea that he was going to appoint me as supervisor. I'm sitting there on the stage, on the pulpit with um, Mother Louise Patterson, um, Jean... Um, Phillips, Karen Jean Phillips, and some other ladies, some of the pastor's wives. And um, he said something. He said, I've been receiving calls. And everybody, you know, they told him they're going to um, consecrate him as bishop in, the, in November. And that was around uh, August or March, one of them, one of our major meetings. And, um, and so he was describing the person that he was getting ready to make supervisor. Well, I didn't know it was me. And I'm up there saying, amen. Yeah, Bishop. Yeah, pa. And so he mentioned that people were calling him and saying, I know you're going to make that. He's very close to Louise Patterson and mother Louise Patterson. And so, uh, they were saying, I know you're going to make Louise your, and he said, no, he said, she has been at the top of this church as the, uh, presiding bishop's wife, and I would not ask her to step down from there. Uh, first of all, she was not a member of any of our churches in the in the jurisdiction, and so he was literally saying, uh, "It's not wise for me to do that. It's not practical for me to do that." Uh, so you, we have to understand in that moment that we need the wisdom of God in making the decisions that we make. A lot of times people in ministry, um, I don't care how, how small, how large your church is, uh, they see me go forth, the pastor, the pastor's wife, they see us go forth, the missionary, evangelist, missionary, whatever your title might be, and it looks glamorous to them. We put it forth as glamorous. That's why I'm transparent. 
uh, we put forth like it's, and so what we would do is we'll spark or ignite a, a, a flame in that person. God didn't call them to do that. We'll ignite a flame and all of a sudden they want to be like you. They, it's okay to, to, to mimic me in my character, uh, but you don't, you can't mimic me in my calling. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. You, you can't mimic me. You can't say because you are a minister and then now you are an elder that your next step is a pastor. That, that, that's, that's not scriptural. It, it just, I mean, y'all may have that as a whatever a, a process, but it is not scriptural. And we've gotten a lot of people in trouble by uh, elevating them, so we think. Uh, to certain um, positions that in our hierarchy, uh, in our church, it means elevation. But unless God has already, mm, 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 when God wants you in a place, in essence, you are already there. Come on. You just got to uh, uh, do what it takes. You don't know where there is. But God has already reserved that for you. Oh, come on in here, y'all. Uh, he's reserved that for you because it's your calling. It was, it was, it was a, a package deal before you were even uh, um, uh, a thought in your mother and your father's mind. And so we mess up because we figure, well, you've been faithful at this church for so many years. And that's not always so because people can't always handle that if God didn't anoint them for that. Oh my God, my God. I'm just telling the truth. I'm just telling the truth. Um, people with their sons, their biological sons, they groom them for that church, to pastor that church. And sometimes you're grooming them to, to run right into uh, the hellfire because that's not where God, you know, we do that with our children, with, with our um, careers. You know, oh, you know, I was, um, uh, um, uh, this the teachers run in this family. Oh, here we go. Teachers run in this family, and and then we send them to school, <clears throat> and we get upset because we helping to pay their tuition. We get upset because they won't go to be a teacher. Come on, come on. Or there's a business, there's a family business, and you've said you had the the son you wanted, and your designs from the day one was I want him to run this business. But is that what God, you know? Uh, uh, God talks about him loaning the children to us in the in Psalm. <coughs> Excuse me. He loans ch our children to us. And he gives us the, the task and the responsibility of teaching them and training them uh, in the way they should go. Now, people miss that up. When I was growing up, I thought it meant what they said, but there's, there's more to it than that. When you train a child in the way he should go, it means there is a path already set. That's the way. He should go. And you have to observe your child, pray over your child, pray with your child. And I did that with my children and um, didn't know that meant that like that. And then guide them. I, I tried to make sure I saw some things in my son. He's an excellent musician. He's a, a writer, producer. But I saw something in him as a, as a kid, as a lad. And so what I did to make sure, I put him, I gave him the exposure. We didn't have a lot of money, but uh, piano lessons, okay? I gave everybody piano lessons because it seemed to be a, a gift in my family and my husband's family. My husband sings excellent. And uh, I said, well, I want them to have this as a background that, you know, may not use it because uh, he wasn't even pastoring uh, to, to have uh, designs on him to play for the church. I mean, all of them to play for the church. And so uh, I, I said, okay, uh, that, that's a basic thing. We need to uh, give them a little bit in the music area. And then I observed my children and I noticed that uh, one of my daughters uh, is in the, uh, what they call it, um, in other words, she's into uh, des the, the uh, designing your clothes and and putting clothes together, fashion in the fashion industry and makeup and all of that. I saw that in her. It was hard to kind of determine that, but eventually um, it, I, I saw that in her. And one just sings uh, enough to get her scholarship, but she is a teacher from her heart with children. She loves uh, teaching children. She's working with artistic children and just loves them, prays over them, all of that. One of the babies was not, they're two and three, one was not eating and she bought them some little cheese fish, cheese crackers and, and, and she 
filmed it. That baby started eating. She had a fit because she's in her zone. Um, and then my baby girl uh, takes after my husband in the medical side. But I watched her. She And she signs for the deaf uh, like a pro uh, because I gave her the exposure with a lady who had a deaf husband. And we wanted to do mime at the church years and years ago. She's 40 now. And uh, we sent about three or four girls over there. And out of that comes, she gets deaf friends. And then I, I sent her to a community class when she was out of high school, I think. I sent her to a community class. And what they do is teach the family members uh, of people who are deaf uh, how to sign. And so she came out of there, just aced that little community thing. Um, yeah. Yes, you did. Yes, baby. You sure did, Jada. That's my cousin, you all. And so then then uh, my son and my baby girl, the one that signs, uh, I gave them piano lessons uh, together. But I already knew my baby girl was not going to do well in reading the music. My son, yes, I insisted because I knew he could do it. But I told the music teacher, just teach her how to play by ear. Well, that was her exposure didn't keep up with it, but she sings better than any one of my children. And so that's what it means by training. So you, you open the door opportunities for same thing in the body. You all uh, stop trying to shove people because they faithful. Stop trying to shove them in areas and stifle the gift that's in them. What bag are you coming out of uh, when you do that? It's a selfish bag. It's for, you know, I need them in my ministry. You might need them, but is that where God wants them? That's a hard thing to do when you have a small ministry. But if you obey God, God will provide what you need. When I went back after the pandemic and started helping my husband out and I was doing all of it. We had a gentleman that I loved him, young man, and he, he had another church to play for. He could only stay with us an hour. And sometimes we just getting off into the worship and praise. And I, we began, I told the members, let's just pray. Let's ask God to send us some team, um, um, praise team people and, and somebody who can stay with us the whole time. My baby that had to, uh, that I had to replace the, for the one hour, he had a fit. He said, mother, you've been blessing me with the word. And, but, uh, we knew that, that, that was coming. Cause I told him that when we hired him, um, but we prayed and we asked God, send the right people, not just somebody wants to, you know, get the money, but send us the people with the right heart to help us. And then God sent this elder. He's from uh, Ohio. He and his wife, he, she's an evangelist, a young couple. And they joined my bishop's church. And um, I asked Bishop about them when I saw them uh, functioning in the jurisdiction. And I said, would you ask them, would they, uh, would he be willing to come and to pray, play for us? And do you not know, she's a praise team all by herself. And sometimes we do it together. We sing together. Um, and he plays for us. And we have, I, I don't you know, insist on that. If I'm going to speak somewhere, he goes with me. And so God will send people. He'll send what you need. Don't tell him what you need. Ask him for it. But then don't tell him who to put there. And sometimes you put the wrong people over your people. Or you put the wrong people in the wrong spots. Wait on. That's why I hate to see people pushed into being a missionary, pushed into doing this. It will show whatever the calling is, it will show. So let's be careful of the bag that we're coming out of when we do what we do. Make sure it's biblically sound. Make sure, excuse me, it's biblically based, based on the word of God, based on God's uh, plan and destiny for people. And so we have a lot of people in high places that worked their way there. It wasn't God. They worked their way there. They paid their way up. I'm sorry. I know of some situations. Some of them slept their way up. Yeah. Maybe, I'm sure everybody's not doing it, but some people sleep their way up. 
And you wonder sometimes, this baby can't hold a tune, but she's over the choir, over this. You're going, what? Somebody is, you know what I'm saying? We shouldn't do that. And then sometimes you may have to put people in there temporarily, maybe, I don't know. But you should never make people feel like, because what you're going to do, once you put people in a certain place, it's going to be hard to get them out of there. You tear up and lose three or four people that they, they like and they consider their friends. You'll lose that person and three or four more. So just do without until God blesses you to have what you need, to have the persons that you need to undergird you um, and to support you in ministry. But be careful how we interact with people. Be careful how what we say, uh, is it coming out of a bag? And people know, have you ever had this situation where you speak to a person, you ask the person something, whatever, and they have an attitude? And you're going like, wait a minute, what, you know, what, where did this come from? I haven't spoken with her. I haven't said anything about her, behind her, back in front of her face either. What's going on? It's because somebody came out of a bag and messed her up the wrong bag. And now you got a person that's in trouble. You may be able to work your way out or pray your way out, but you got somebody who might not be able to forget what you said. And you've got blood on your hands. You have blood on your hands. Then you've destroyed a soul because down the road, they'll remember that you made it appear that it's okay to talk about somebody, whether you know them or not, whether they did anything to you or not. You have sent a message to that innocent person. And because y'all laugh and talk does not mean that spiritually that person can handle the garbage that you're talking. So you wonder some, sometimes we wonder why people go through so bad. Because you came out of a bag and you still don't understand that you're still operating out of that bag. And eventually God will teach you. He will allow you to see your, it's amazing to me though. People can do things and the chastisement, the chastising will happen and they don't see it as chastising. They see it as uh, their victims. What God is trying to say to you, you need to repent. You need to quit this right here. This is an area that the devil is taking you down. And you're wondering why you can't get a job. You're wondering why you can't get a decent job. You want, you got to be able to know what the word of God says. You got to be able to know what the Bible says and walk there in. And then there should be somebody. God will send you somebody who will sit down with you, who, who's walked that walk and share with you that will be transparent enough with you to help you to work your way out of that. Because he desires for you to walk a holy lifestyle. He desires for you to give him glory. He desires for his glory to be revealed in, through you, in you, through you, and around you. He will do that. Take it from me. He will. He will do that. Good morning, Doris. Good, good morning, darling. So what bag is it? Y'all check yourself. Check yourself and say, God, what why do I what is this going on? You know. Uh and you wonder something, no, let's reverse it. Then you wonder sometimes what bag other people are coming out of. You know, what what in the world? You know? What prompted you? What made you feel like you needed to talk to me like that? What made you feel like you could do me like that or uh uh go into my personal belongings and you know, your children would do that if you don't stop them and say, hey, 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 ask me permission now. I might not mind you having it and you may be taking something that I need. So wait, 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 wait. Hold it. Respect me by asking me. I know I'm mom, but respect me by asking me. And so <laughs> you don't know sometimes the bag, what message you've sent and the message that people are sending to you when they come out of a certain bag, you're trying to figure out what bag is this? Because you don't want to respond the wrong way. You don't want to reply the wrong way. Uh, but you then have to allow the 
something that's not used very well in our churches, the spirit of discernment. Be able to discern what spirit is operating. It's not the person, it's the spirit that they have allowed to use them. And uh, I told my daughter, anybody, my family, you know, um, just get, you don't have to give me anything, but just give me respect. Just, just respect me. Oh, wow. Okay, Doris. Well, well, God is, look, I guess he's trying to tell us something, baby. So, um, just respect me. You don't have to like me. You don't have to love me, but please respect me. And we need to learn it even in the, in the body of Christ. <laughs> don't, uh, you may know your pastor, uh, personally, but don't, don't, I don't know if my pastor's on here still, but don't call him Carlos. Don't, don't do that. Don't disrespect him in front of because what you'll do, you that's becoming common with him. And then you've opened the door for others who don't know any better to say it's okay for them to call him Carlos. And then when that thing gets out in the open around other church people that's not in your local church and you around there calling him Carlos, that's disrespectful. I don't care. The only one that can call him, and I, I call my husband pastor in front of the members. Or uh, Bay, I got a little uh, name. I call him Bay. I don't, I don't call him Freddie in front of the members. It, you, you're opening a door there. You're opening a door, and so um, the bag. Watch the bag. There are all kinds of bags, and we don't want to get our instructions out of a bag. Pulling, you know, like you pulling, um, what you call it, um, straws. Uh, like you, uh, um, it, anyway, uh, you don't want to do that. You, you don't want to do that. That's why I keep stressing this to, uh, please stay in your Bibles. Please stay. Good morning, Demetra. Please stay in the word of God. That is your, your, uh, your, your roadmap. It's your GPS. Come on now. It's your GPS. When you follow it, guess what? Okay, what anybody else say, the word of God says it. And as long as you do it in the right spirit, God will back you up. It is our roadmap. Stay in the right places for the word to be explained to you. If you're in a church, you need to stay under that teaching. And anybody else that is teaching the word of God, we got other places now all on social media, like right here. But you also need to make sure that you're following the teaching and the leading of a, a godly leader. Because he watches out for your soul. If you got somebody that can't watch out for your soul, why are you there? Why are you there? That's the job of the pastors to teach and to train uh, because he's watching out for you. He needs to be able to tell you when you're going wrong and you not get mad. You may be a little heated, but you know he's right. You don't get heated with him like that. You get heated because you realize you, you messed it up. Get heated with yourself. But he watches out for your soul. And so when people get upset with the truth, don't try to fight it. It's only going to take the it's going to take God to to realign them. You 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 really can't do it. It's going to take the Spirit of God to realign them, to open up their understanding, or to cause them to humble themselves and receive what thus saith the Lord. So uh, I just, that's really what I want to share this morning. And I was kind of feeling really good because I got a chance. My knee bothered me a little bit and I sat down for a while. And then I jumped right back up and, and started cleaning. And so uh, anytime I clean, I feel good behind cleaning. And I said, well, this may be a good time since I finished uh, to come on and share. I may get out for a minute. The sun is coming out. Um, I don't know how many of you eat pizza 
I, I can't do um, a regular pizza. I have to do a vegan pizza. So I have to go to Whole Foods. But I was looking at, you know, look like it's going to rain. But I may just hop out of here um, by myself because in a little bit my um, my um, caregiver will be gone. Because I was going to take my daughter with me. and uh, But I'll just leave her here so she can be here um, with him. When the um, when Brenda leaves and pick up uh, something from Whole Foods and not try to do the whole thing, I was trying to do a little grocery list. I may do that tomorrow or closer to the weekend. But I'm just um, I wanted to come on uh, and share this because it was in my spirit a few days ago. What bag are you coming out of? Uh, be sure you come out of the Bible and not a bag. Be Raining on your end. Oh, goodness. I know they said it was going to rain, but the sun has come out a little bit. So maybe it'll allow me to go <laughs> to Whole Foods. I don't know. I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to push it, but I did want that vegan pizza. And most uh, pizza places do not sell vegan pizzas. Yeah, ca yeah cauliflower crust. It, the crust, as long as it's whole, whole wheat, I like, but... It is the cheese. It, it, the cheese has no dairy. They do the vegan cheese. And you can put any toppings on there. Uh, broccoli, spinach. I usually get broccoli, spinach. I don't do tomatoes either. I love them, but I can't do them. And they, uh, I'm going to get veggies to be my toppings. And um, and the Whole Foods sells a good vegan pizza. Uh, we called it one close to me, and they don't do them. They don't do them. They'll do the uh, uh, vegetarian, but as a vegetarian, they do dairy. Vegetarians do dairy. And so um, I that was out. I said, well, Lord, maybe I need to get something else in my mind to eat uh, today. My husband, I, <laughs> oh my God, I asked him this. I need to stop doing that. I asked him, oh, cauliflower wings are good. Okay, I think I've had those, baby, but it's been a long time. Uh, but I, I sometimes I'll ask my husband because sometimes just to get him to eat. And of course, you all at West Haven know what he said. I said, babe, what you want to eat tonight? Now, he had that yesterday. And he's alert today. It's not like he's not alert. He told me he wanted hot dogs. He had four hot dogs yesterday. Not with the bread now. We don't, we don't do a lot of bread here. He had four hot dogs. Hot dog. That's right, Alicia. So I told him, baby, I can't. Oh, a burger, yeah, but he it was hot dog, uh, hot dogs this time. And I said, babe, we can't eat hot dogs every day. So what I may do, I don't know if he'll like them, though. I thought about maybe trying to find him some vegan hot dogs. Uh, I don't know if he'll know the difference or not. I may get some, <clears throat> excuse me. I may be, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I may be able to eat one or two of those. Um, but he's a hot dog fanatic, been that way since he was a teenager. Uh, so I've got to figure out what he can eat that he like that he likes to eat because I, there are times he does not want to eat. You can't get him to eat because he's zoned out on me. And so uh, I said, you know, I bought that Wendy's burger the other day and you didn't touch it. He said, how did I do that? <laughs> we started laughing. Because he was really zoned out. I, I couldn't even get him to open his mouth. So I may try to get out. Um, is it raining hard where you are, Doris? He won't like the vegan. Well, I've eaten them before. And it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I'm not a, uh, uh, really that fond of them. But if I'm going to eat a hot dog, that's what I would eat. Uh, so we'll we'll figure it out. We'll see what else we can get him. Um, and may get some ground turkey and just do him. Um, yeah, I've, I've eaten that. I used to eat those all the time. Oh, they're good, Jetty. Yes, they are. Um, I don't know that he'll eat them. He's a, he's just a, oof. He didn't just get like that, y'all. He's been like that. He just was more reasonable when he was, you know, um, kind of at, more at himself. It slowed up. Okay, we may just run on out of here. I don't know if, uh, I may just run on out of here and try to get that vegan pizza. And I may see if my granddaughter is still there. She works there, and she can go on and order it 
and I can just go pick it up. I don't know. She may be uh, uh, out now. Uh, uh, so I'm going to try to contact her. And those of you who like candy and you have some uh, dairy issues like I do, or you have, you're a diabetic, um, I, I give it to my husband, but I count his carbs. They taught me that, how to count his carbs. You look on the back of anything you buy, and at the top it will say uh, uh, how many carbs and what portion equals that many carbs. And so you can have so many of those carbs. And so there's a candy bar. I mentioned this before, and um, it's kind of high on Amazon. But if you want a good chocolate bar that doesn't have a lot of junk in it, all that corn syrup and all that stuff in it, it's called Hue, H-U, capital H, capital U, and it stands for, I researched it, it stands for human. Uh, I guess it means uh, consumption for human beings, the best thing. Yeah, that I used to eat it all the time, Jed. I used to keep it in the freezer. We haven't done it in a long time. Um, so I don't know though, cause I, I don't remember what he ate them or not, but he's at that age, that stage now that, um, he, he knows and he will tell you, I can't eat it. I don't want it. I can't eat it. But if you put those hot dogs down there and put some mustard on those hot dogs, baby, if I had to put six there, he would try to eat all six. Yes, they're good. I eat them. Now, whether he'll eat them or not, it remains to be seen. Y'all have to know my husband when it comes to food. And uh, But I will try to think of something. He may eat that pizza. I don't know. He's still adjusting to his new teeth. He's still adjusting to his new teeth. So we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Well, I'm going to get off of here. I love you guys. Um, keep me in prayer. I'm going to try to... Uh, get out of here for a minute, and it's, it's about, um, let me see, 15, maybe 15 to 20 minutes from me, um, drive, 20 minute drive, and, and I'm going to try to contact my granddaughter to see if she's there, and then I'm going to go ahead and order it, and then I'll pick up. She's holding, she's supposed to be checking on the heel bars for me, too. Um, Kroger was carrying them for some reason. This one over here stopped, but Walmart is carrying them now. And uh, whereas if I order them online, I have to order six to eight, but they're like almost six dollars a bar. But they've dropped down to uh, like three ninety eight or four ninety eight at Walmart, and they are like um. Maybe five dollars or four dollars at Whole Foods the last time uh I checked. So she was supposed to be checking that for me. And so I'm gonna get up and see. That's it. Huge chocolate bars. Yes, you know them. Oh well, yes, ma'am, they're good. And he can have four squares at a time, or uh, maybe five squares at a time. And baby, he loves those. And when I asked him, you want a snack, sometimes he said, I want some chocolate. So he likes those. Two ninety nine, Jesus! You gonna have to what store? You gonna have to ship me some. I'll pay you. Two nine. Oh my God! Oh, mm. Mm, 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 mm. just got some for two ninety nine. Well, I've not had um, one for two ninety nine now. Uh, they now have the milk chocolate with the special milk. You know where the, you, it's not something. Uh, but I don't use those. That's dairy. They're in a light brown package. Uh, uh, yeah. But these are in the dark uh, brown and beige packet. Uh, they should have not have any. Um... They're my Walmart girl. Do they have the candy bar, um, Shonda? Do they have the Hue bar where you are? She works for Walmart. Hey, Sugar, do they have the Hue bars where you work or do you know? <laughs> My face. <laughs> what did I look like, Alicia? <laughs> oh. That's the dark chocolate. Absolutely. That's a better chocolate for you anyway. It's, she's still going to check for me. All right. Well, I, if you check, then I'm going to uh, maybe just pick up a... a maybe two or three from um, Whole Foods, and uh, you can let me know 
And if not, I'll just have to get my granddaughter to um, get them for me. Oh, the, the <laughs> whoa, two night and nine. Yes, Lord Jesus, I can storm in the freezer. My God. But anyway, they're better. They are healthier for you. You know, if you want a snack, you want to, you know, you probably can. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're going to send me some. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord Jesus. I don't mind cash apping you, baby, sending you the money because like he likes them for snack. And so when he snacks, he eats one half of the bar. I eat the other half and we, we share like that. Um. And so I don't always offer it to him, uh, but I let him ask me sometimes. Sometimes I'll offer it to him and uh, he gets four squares and that satisfies him that he's had some chocolate. So he'll ask me, I want some, you got some chocolate? And I, I'll say yes or no. Oh, Jenny, bless your heart. Well, baby, I thank you so much. Well, if you send me some and I find me a few bars today, We'll be well stocked. I can just go to the refrigerator or the freezer. I don't put his in the freezer because he's still having trouble <clears throat> um, uh, with his teeth. Not, nothing wrong with the teeth. He just has not adjusted. Uh, and you know when you when you have the condition he has, um, you you know your mind won't tell you how to you know operate the teeth. So some things I mostly I try to give him something that's very chewable, uh, very soft enough for him. So, uh, but anyway, I'm going to get off of here and see if I can make this run before it really starts. It's supposed to be raining later and I'm going to get off of here and run to the store. Lord willing, I'm going to call my granddaughter first. And, um, I love you all with the love of the Lord. Um, keep me in your prayers. Um, don't know what we'll talk about Sunday, but I'm waiting on the Lord, the leading of the Lord. And if I, if the Lord leads me to come back on, I will. Uh, I'm taking a mental break. So that means movies. That means trying to find me a good, good movie. And Jetty, that was a precious picture of your mom. Oh, she just looks like an angel. And you give her my love. Tell her I said hello and give her my love. Yes, love you too, sweetheart. Mm -mm. Amen. All right, you guys have a, a blessed rest of the day, rest of the week. I'll see you mm. when I see you. Love you. And I'm out of here. Bye-bye.